Guys, we're back for another exciting episode of the Hashtag Wednesday Match Play, and I'm excited for tonight's show for a couple of reasons. One, we got a tour winner with us, and we're going to talk all about that. Not only is he a tour winner, he is the course record holder at a Troon facility where he won said tour event, but we're going to talk about that in a little bit. And also because this guy had dinner with Gary Player, who we're going to tell that apparently this guy's friends with Gary Player, and Scott and I from Eat Sleep Golf have been trying to get Gary on this show for a long time, so maybe this, I mean, Gary, if you're watching, on the show sometime, but tonight's episode of the Hashtag Wednesday Match Play presented by Eat Sleep Golf is, it, it's kind of a cool episode because not a, not only are you a tour player, you also played in a pro-am today of an event that you're playing in this week, so we got a lot of fun stuff to talk about, and the guy's won on the PGA Tour Latin America, he's won on the McKenzie Tour, I don't even know much about the McKenzie Tour, so we're going to ask questions about that, but versus me trying to explain who this guy is, what he does, and where he comes from, I'm going to introduce Patrick Newcomb to the show, thank you for coming on the Hashtag Wednesday Match Play, Patrick. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I'm excited to be here. Um, this this should be should be a fun uh, fun hour or so. I think it'll be an hour, but it might turn into an hour. It's a half an hour show that usually goes over. So if you like talk, we might be here for a little bit. But give me an overview, like just top to bottom. Where did you come from? You played in the Midwest. You're from the Midwest. And just kind of talk about your journey to get from where you started to where you are today. Um, yeah, I was uh, a kid from a small town in western Kentucky that was always pretty good and kind of overlooked, uh, just kind of had a homegrown swing and, and, you know, and never really had the money to go play AJGAs. And, you know, I started playing pretty well at the end of my high school career and, you know, Murray State University took a chance on me um, and, you know, went there and it was one of the best decisions of my life. Uh, you know, I really grew up as a person and a player and, uh, you know, my whole thing turned around where I could even think about playing professional golf like my sophomore year. and really went on to win a lot in college, which, uh, which was very fortunate. And it was, it was really exciting. I enjoyed it. And then, um, and then I did what all pros do. I turned pro and thought I was going to blow up, blow up the world and just keep, keep making birdies and winning golf tournaments. That's just not what happened. So, um, worked hard for three years and, uh, you know, traveled the world, went to South Africa, um, went to South Africa for five months playing the sunshine tour on and off Latin America tour, struggling, barely making cuts about to hang it up and then uh then lightning struck in a bottle in honduras and everything's changed so speaking of good segue to that because i mean i'm a i'm a troon guy right i've worked for troon for the last four years and you played in the honduras open at endura beach that's a troon property and you not only shot the course record 61 on saturday but you won the darn tournament so just talk about that event, what that means to you. Gary Player designed that course, too. So, I mean, this is kind of like a multi-part question. Just talk about that week, what that meant to you, and everything that wrapped into the Honduras Open. Um, the, the, really, the thing that, the, really the biggest thing about Honduras that I'll always remember was my uh, – I was in Guatemala the week before, and I had conditional status, and I wasn't getting in every week. My number was getting in some weeks and not in others. I was having to go do Monday qualifiers. So I leave Guatemala because there's a bunch of wind delays. I leave and withdraw from the tournament. I'm not even going to try to make the cut and make a check. I'm going to go to Honduras so I can regroup, play the Monday, and try to get in the tournament because I really liked Honduras. One of my favorite courses from the year four. So I'm on this plane at 4 in the morning, 4 a.m., or going to the airport. I'm getting on the plane like 5 a.m., and I'm literally having this inner monologue like, what are you doing, Patrick? What are you doing? Why are you still doing this? You, you all you do is play great when you go home and you come to tournaments and you just just lay an egg every single time. I was like, I'm finally it doesn't get better in the next few weeks. Like I'm done. I'm just gonna done. I'm just done. I'm gonna hang them up. I'm just, there's it's not worth it. I'm not having fun anymore. First time I'd ever thought like this. Go to Honduras, get sick. I'm sick all week, all week long. I'm sick. Start to feel a little bit better on Thursday. But don't practice at all. I don't hit any. I hit a few practice shots to warm up. I don't do anything that week. It's the craziest thing. I, I love. I love the resort. I was staying there on the resort. I love the whole area, and I sat in my bed all week long, and played. And then so I make a birdie on this thirty-six hole to make the cut on the number. Um, had to make birdie, make the cut, make the birdie, make the cut on the number. I'm first tee time out on Saturday. Go out and shoot sixty-one, and. Uh, <laughs> Off tournament. I played my last uh, playoff. I played my last or thir- 39 holes in like 18 under without a bogey. 
Um, and it just, and everything changed for me then the confidence and it led into this amazing year that I've had it was one round on a Saturday morning in Honduras while I was sick. That like, so Scott said you had a good story about this tournament. I didn't realize it was that like, that's almost like unreal. Like do you, do you think that not hitting balls and being sick and like, and like that, the, the internal monologue through all that was what led you to play so good and get that win. I mean, maybe, um, if so, I need to do it more often. Um, but uh, no, it was it was just an amazing week. It 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 was it was it had been coming. So I'd been playing really well, and it just hadn't been showing. And that happens in professional golf a lot. You can kind of see it building and peaking. Um, and then I got sick, and then I got nothing out of my rounds the first two days. And I was just like, well, it's going to be another week. And I guess I was just sick, and I kind of turned my brain off. I got on my own way. And I went out in the morning, and I was like, well, you know, I got to play this like a Monday qualifier. I just got to go shoot as low as I can. Might as well just shoot at everything. And I hit at everything and kept hitting it to like six six feet. And when you when you hit it six feet on almost every hole and make a couple 20-footers, all of a sudden, that's what happens. Yeah, that's awesome. Is that the only course record you have, or do you have course records elsewhere? Uh, I have uh, five course records. Five records. I set. I set one. Um, I have five course records. Either course records or tie or hold the tie. Like I hold the course record with somebody. Um, I set one in Edmonton. Incredible. I set one in Edmonton, uh, Canada. Uh, first win up there. Uh, I went seven hundred through my first eight holes to start the golf tournament. Um, lipped out for twenty eight on my opening nine, which is when you do that in the tournament, you're like, oh wow. Like, don't mess this up. Like, geez, like, you, you pretty much just you've, – you've done all the work right now, right out the gate. So, um, yeah, so I shot uh, 62, lipped out for the course record there. But I, I hold it with somebody. Uh, but those are my only two in competition. So the team at East Sleep Golf always sends in a lot of questions. Um, this might be the last week that I actually write my own questions because I got, like, 14 from them. So I guess I'm done asking questions. Let's move on to theirs. How do you decide what events to play in? Like, I mean, is it just based off of what you qualify for, or do you get to choose? Like, what's that process look like? Um, I'm in a position where I kind of get to choose right now. But most of the time, at this level, uh, you don't have to choose. You don't get to choose. You pretty much – until you get all the way to the PGA Tour – and you keep your card for the first year, and you're a full member the next year, and you have a full schedule, no matter what, you pretty much have to play in anything you get in, or I think so, um, and, and play and take your chances. Because it's, you know, at this level, one win can change your life, you know, especially, uh, you know, can give you a chance on the web, and then on the web next year, one win, you know, your world completely changes. So, you know, for me, I think you just got to keep playing because you just – I did it for three years and I kept playing and then I finally got a win and then, you know, the floodgates open. So I think everybody just has to keep playing. I don't really – I play nonstop. I'm a guy that I'll play – if I'm a PGA Tour member, I'm playing 41 weeks. I'm, 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 I'm going every week. Even if I don't even want to play, I just show up and maybe do what I did in Honduras and, you know, enjoy the city and hardly practice, but I'm going to play. I mean, it's my job to play golf, so – and it's it's a it's a pretty good job. So it's I'm not I don't get I won't complain about going and playing a great golf course for a lot of money. Yeah, no kidding. And to your point about the web.com, Wesley Bryan is a perfect example of that. I mean, the dude was a I mean, he was a trick shot guy on YouTube. Nobody really realized that he was also a pretty good player. And he gets to the web.com, gets to that, and now he's a PGA Tour winner. And I mean, the dude's a stud. I mean, as far as that's concerned. So now talking about playing, you played earlier today. You're in a pro am. Talk about that. Who'd you play with? What tournament is it? Where are you at? Like, I mean, you're all over the world, it seems. So, what's going on then down there? Oh uh, yeah, I'm in Lima, Peru this week, playing on the Latin America tour. Uh, I wanted to come back down and you know just stay sharp and keep playing. Lima is like my favorite city I've gone to. I've, I've traveled the world. I've been to South Africa, Portugal, Scotland, been you know all over South and Central America and Canada. This is one of my favorite places I've ever gone. Um, so the pro-am was pretty good today. It was it was a fast pro-am, which is rare. And uh, we played in about four and a half hours, which is about an hour and a half shorter than most pro-ams I play in. Um, and it was good. It was, it was good. The guys the guys were nice. Uh, but down here, you know, you just have local business guys that come out and play or they have some of their friends come out and play for them. So, you know, just, just regular guys here in Lima. And uh, it, the best thing I can say about it is the fast, which was nice. That's cool. 
Now, I assume, because every picture of you, you have a Srixon hat on. Who are some of your sponsors? And if Srixon is one of them, talk about that relationship, because they're a pretty pretty cool up-and-coming, not up-and-coming, but a, a popular social media-driven brand. Oh, Srixon's been amazing. Um, I actually signed with uh, Cleveland Golf and Srixon um, when I was coming out of college uh, with uh, Mike Dunphy. Uh, who has been with me since was was giving me balls and, and wedges when I was in college and and trying to get me to switch over there at the end and you know Shrixon has been on board and super committed through the ups and downs and mainly the downs over the last three years um, they didn't have a whole lot of bright spots um, in my career uh, leading into this year so they're uh, they're great equipment's awesome everyone asked me would you play the ball if you didn't have if you didn't have to in a contract, 100%. 100%. I would never play another ball than tricks on um, while playing p- competitive golf. Um, you know, it just – it fits me really well. It's a great ball. And just tricks on in general um, are just anything I need. Whenever I need it, they take care of it. It's it, it's amazing to have that kind of support, especially coming from a guy that was – I was playing mini tours and terrible status places and traveling the world and finishing 30th when I played good. Or when I thought I played good, you know, so it was, it was nice. They've been very loyal. One of the people that I hope follows you on Twitter is a girl that runs a lot of their social media and she's always posting fun pictures at photo shoots and stuff. So I, I tweeted her a little bit ago to tell her to tune in. So I'll make sure that uh, she sees that she gets a little bit of a shout out in tonight's show because the hat now it's not the hat that you have on. I'm, I mean, I got to say, I'm a little sad that you're not wearing the big brimmed hat, which has kind of become a staple of yours. Like, I'm not going to say that it's a normal hat, but I don't see a lot of guys wearing that hat. Like what you got on now is typical, but what's, what's the story behind the big brimmed hat? No, oh, hang on one second. <laughs> He's got it. That's what's fun. He's going to put it on. <laughs> Scott, next time we're going to have to talk about, you know, dress code before you get started. For the next, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So, uh, no, the hat started in uh, – where did the hat start at? Oh, on Monday – it started last year in the summer, Tom. Right before I was going back down for the second half in Latin America um, where I had to play really well the second half to keep my card. On Monday in Springfield, Missouri, uh, the web.com event, my brother takes the – my brother, great caddy, but he plays on his own and he has his other stuff in his life going on, so he can't just take a week off to caddy. I was like, listen. I'll pay you to a rate. Like, I need you here. I'm playing great. You know, you're just going to magnify it. I need you here. So he comes. He's like, all right, well, you got to get me a big hat. I'm not going to get sunburned this week. Like, complained, said all this stuff. Like, you got to do this, this, and this. So I'm like, I'm like the caddy, like, trying to get him, make him, like, appease him so he can come play, right? So so he'll come and help me out, right? So he's – whatever, I used a small bag that week. Trick was like, you know, we'd like you to use the big bag. You don't have to, though. But, you know, I'm in a web event. I never get to play. I want to use the staff bag. Oh, absolutely. We're using the small bag because he's not carrying the big bag around that place. It, no, it's, it is, it's just – it's funny, like, the whole interaction. So I get him a big – the big hat. I get him this hat right here. But it was, like, a brown one um, and whatnot, like, brown with black lettering and, like, not the greatest colors. That's the one you've probably seen in most photos is the one with the brown with the black lettering that matches nothing. Um, so I bought it for him, or I got it from him from the van. And so he's wearing it during the week because um, he always used to wear a Nike one. He was with Nike. Um, and he was like, well, I'll just, I'd rather wear a shirt sign just to look better when we're out there. So <laughs> he's wearing it. I'm like, that looks pretty good. Like, that's, that'd be nice. I'd like for my ears and my neck not to get burnt. Like, like that's, it's, it's, it's pretty, it looks pretty comfy. So I go home and I start wearing it when I practice for a couple of days. And then we go to uh, – and then I, I go back out and I start wearing it the second half uh, here and there in practice rounds. I was like, I can't wear it in the tournament. In Argentina, I started talking to my buddy. He's like, dude, just, you play great in practice rounds. Maybe it's a mojo thing. Go do it. Um, I go out and I'm leading by uh, – I'm leading by two after two rounds wearing the big hat in Argentina. First time out. First time wearing it in a tournament. And it's like – Okay, well, I kind of almost have to now. Um, yeah, so I start wearing it. It's, uh, you know, it's good. They got me some white ones. So, you know, so I like, they're even like, they're even like up in it. They're buying into the hat. And, you know, it just got comfortable at a certain point. And, 
you know, I put less sunscreen on. I like it. I like it. I, I, I don't mind being different. That's awesome. I, everyone, else, everyone else looks exactly the same out there. So. Oh, that's, oh, that's great, great, man. Plus, I'm like, I'm like a... I'm like the average Joe. Like I look like the dude that plays on the weekends, drinks his beer, works the nine to five, you know, gets away. Like I don't, I'm not crazy fit. I'm not, you know, six, you know, six foot and, you know, fit and hit it a long way with this perfect golf swing. You know, I'm me. So I'm different. I do things differently. You know, why not add something to it? So let's go back let's to how really cool. like, like, that trophy is awesome. awesome. Like, it looks like, like, it looks like somebody like stick flowers and like put it beside your TV at home. What are you going to do with that big thing? So I didn't get that one. Oh, so no I, way. I, I, no, I, they gave me a mini uh, one. It's the same, exactly the same thing. It's like a smaller one. Though. So I always thought you got these, like, big trophies. Right? Yeah, like, that's, I, that's, that's what I always thought. Like, I, just, I never would have thought that, you know, you win a professional event. You know, no, you get travel trophies. I was kind of salty about it. I got, I got, I won twice in Canada, and like I got this, the one that I won in Edmonton, it was sick. It was like black and had this like blue, blue like blown glass on the top of it. It was awesome. Like it was literally awesome. And they just sent me a little blown glass, blue blown glass. Like it doesn't even have anything on it. Like it literally just is like a replica of like the, of the thing. I, I don't know. It was, uh, so I just get miniature ones. That's like a little bit. Like I, I feel bad for you, and I'm not even winning these trophies. Like, I mean, it's it's a good problem to have to complain about the size of your trophies that you get. Like, it's like at a certain point, it's like, what are you even talking about? Like, I know guys would be able, wouldn't even say anything, but but it's just funny. It's funny how you like. I was like, I wanted the. I don't know how I would have got the plane. Got it, got on the plane with it. I mean, it was well. It was, to that you know, point, though, like I go back to like the Happy Gilmore days with the big giant checks. Like I now, I would turn into that guy. Like I'd be okay. You give me a small trophy, I want a big check, like the legit, like giant poster size checks. Like that'd be. Cool. I've, I've never got a check before. Never got a big check. See, I, I tried to get them to send it to me in Edmonton. I said I've never got a big check. Can I have a big check? I was being like super. I was being pre. I was just being a prima donna. Just like <laughs> I need everything. Like. Like I was like, I'm like, I want, I just want the big check. And they just, they tried everything they could to ship it to me without messing it up. And they're like, we can't. So I still don't have a big check either. Man, put your foot down. Like when you make it to the PGA tour, like you just <laughs> don't even take anything less. Be like, Hey, I'm a tour player now. So you've had a pretty awesome career thus far and you're just kind of getting started, but what's been some of the most memorable points of your career thus far? Um, definitely, definitely Honduras is definitely number one. Um, you know, the, the inner monologue with, with everything that happened and, and to have a, have a round like that, um, I mean, that essentially jump started my career. I mean, that, that literally 18 holes Saturday morning in Honduras changed everything for me. Uh, so that would, that's, that's definitely number one. Um, Monday and in my first PGA tour event, uh, the McGladry, my first year was amazing. Um, birdie five of my last seven. Mm -hmm. And then the playoff hole to get in the tournament. Um, you know, I I'll, I'll never forget in the playoff. I had about a three footer and just stuffed it. Stone Cold stuffed it on one at Brunswick Country Club. And you know, after you know making all those birdies, and I walked off the green. I was on the last groups in, right to the tee to the playoff, and just hit two great shots. And I remember like not feeling like I could pull the putter back. It felt like it was so heavy. I mean, it was only it was like wasn't even three feet. It was like two feet. It was a tap in, and like, I got thought I I just knew I was gonna miss it. Um, yeah, that one, um, and then probably what goes back to what started all the winning for me was, uh, when I won my first state am, my dad was on the bag in Kentucky back in, uh, 20, 2011, I won the Kentucky state am, he caddied for me, uh, and, you know, that started all this winning, um, you know, and I just really never, you know, I didn't slow down, I had a little gap in there, but then, you know, Honduras opened the floodgates this year, and, there hasn't been a whole lot to be happy about, really, in my professional career. Never could make it through first stage. You know, never, like, nothing. And then, uh, well, now I don't have to worry about it. I just missed first stage. I'm going straight to finals. So, so just, yeah, really just these last three months, in a nutshell, or all the highlights of pretty much my professional career. You know, I've had a win here or there, but on many tour events. But this um, – just this whole this whole year since Honduras has just been a really, really fast and amazing. 
Well, the best thing about this is the, ne the next time someone asks you that question, you could say it was appearing on the hashtag Wednesday Match Play presented by Eat Sleep Golf. I mean, you could, that could throw that in the list somewhere in the mix. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, it'll definitely make like top 12 or 13. <laughs> no, 13 is the worst number in the world. Don't use that number. <laughs> Now, when you travel to these cool places, because, I mean, you're not just, like, going to, like, I mean, you're a kid from Kentucky, right? And you're going to all these really cool countries all over the world. Do you spend all your time focused on golf, or are you going to some local restaurants, seeing the sites? Like, what's that look like for you when you hit a new, a new city? Um, it, I actually probably see more the second time I go, um, because I don't really know where to go, you know? So I'll see if, like, you know, I'll just go wherever everyone else is going. I'll see a little bit of stuff. Uh, you know, guys come in early and, you know, like go to go to Rio, um, you know, go see the Christ statue, uh, you know, do stuff like that. You know, go keto. They go to the equator like that's really not me. That's, you know, I, it's one, it's not me. And two, it's like I'm really there, really trying to get to the next level. I always thought like if I wanted to go on vacation, like and see something. If I get to a point in my life where I can, I'll go to vacation and see something. Um, you know, it's a work week for me. So, I, you know, I, I see, you know, I'll see the city a little bit. Um, you know, maybe if I'm flying out on Monday, I'll check out the nightlife on Sunday night. Um, you know, if I got a long travel day on Monday. But I don't really see a whole lot of these cities, which is sad to say. But, you know, I get to see the culture experience a little bit and, you know, enjoy the, you know, little nuances of, of cities. Um, like Lima is my favorite one, but I think it's because I forced myself to stay about 45 minutes away in the city. So I'm in the city all week, and then I just shuttle to the course and back. Um, everyone else stays by the course. There's nothing by the course. It'd just be like a normal tournament. But here I stay down by the ocean with a bunch of great restaurants and stuff. So I guess that's why I like it more. Here. Nice. Yeah, it's the food that does it, right? Yeah, now, food. speaking of food, you had dinner with Gary Player not long ago. So apparently you guys have a relationship. Talk about that. I mean, what do you guys talk about at dinner? And like, I mean, I can just imagine like that conversation. But how do you know Gary and kind of what, what that relationship looked like? Um, Gary, I reached out to Gary uh, after I won. He, you know, his, his media team uh, tweeted at me and said, uh, congratulations. And, you know, obviously he designed, he designed Endura. Uh, and so he was just – you know, they were giving, you know, Endura a shout out, giving me a shout out for the win there, um, you know, doing their due diligence for, uh, you know, for, you know, their obligations and whatnot. And, uh, you know, and, and so I reached out to his Twitter account, sent him a message. I was like, you know, amazing. Thank you so much for the, the kind words. It means a lot coming from a legend. I'd love to like pick your brain, like a phone call, maybe dinner. That'd be amazing. You know, and you know, if we, you know, if you really want to feel like going crazy, you know, play nine holes or something. And he got back to me and he's like, I'd love to, I'm busy. Let me get your info. Gets my info. I think he's going to call me in a couple days. Right. I mean, I'm in Orlando all week practicing before I fly back out. I fly back out or like two weeks. I'm in Orlando. Nothing. Fly back out, go play two tournaments, come back, reach out to him again. Like, Hey, I'm in Orlando. I don't know if you have time uh, to get together. If you're around, I get a phone call like 45 minutes later. It's Gary Player on the phone. And he's like, he's like, Patrick, what are you doing? You know, where are you at? I was like, I'm up here in Orlando practicing. He's like, oh, I wish you were closer to me down here in Jupiter. You know, I'd love to get together tomorrow. And I was just like, Gary, wherever you need me to be, I'll be there. It's just only a three-hour drive. That's not a problem. Yeah, I was like, just tell me if I was in if I was in Nova Scotia and you'd like be here tomorrow, I'd be there. I don't know how I'd get there, but I'd be there. Um and yeah, so I went there, we spent the day together, had a really good day. You know, I was just you know, I just tried to have fun, soak it all up and, and enjoy it, you know, and we, we had a great day. I was cracking jokes and just being myself and you know, he you know, he took to me a little bit and uh enjoyed the conversation and and he's like, I want to keep up with you. I want to know what you're doing. Uh, I played pretty well when I played with him as well. I made quite a few birdies so um, at the Bears Club. And so uh, he was we, – we went back and forth, talked maybe once or twice um, through people, not really him, but just through people. And then I reached out to him. I was in New York visiting a buddy, and he was there for the President's Cup. I reached out to him. He got right back to me again. Gave me a, reached out to his media team. Media team literally showed him called me 45 minutes later, said, be in my hotel at four o'clock today. Went to his hotel. We caught up. Like, you know, he, he'd been keeping up with me a little bit, but I caught up, told him what all I was doing and, and how everything worked. And he was all excited. And then he invited me to dinner with his whole team. 
you know, spent like five hours with him in New York, uh, just catching up. And yeah, and we've been, we've been talking more since then. Um, yeah, he called me, uh, uh, he called me right after that. Uh, then I went out to Scotland and we just stayed in touch. He's, he's a great guy. He's been, he's helped me a lot. He's, he's taught me a lot and things that he used to do through experiences, you know, you know, I, I've taken some of that and applied it to my game and, you know, I've just been playing better for it. That's awesome. Well, Scott, I hope you're watching and I hope you're listening because that basically what he just said was that Gary wants to come on the show. He didn't say that exactly, but I, I heard that through, you know, what he was saying. Now, I didn't tell you before we went live, this was going to fly by and we've only been talking for like 25, 28 minutes now. But before I let you go, we got a couple of more questions before we jump into the back nine. Now, I'm from the Midwest. You're from the Midwest. There's a lot of great golf courses in the Midwest. What are some of your favorites and some hidden gems that don't get talked a lot about in the news and in some of the big magazine publications? Um, the Midwest, a really good track is Paducah Country Club. They're pretty good to me. It's, it's, it's in western Kentucky. It's, uh, it's a good course. Uh, if you're ever on that in the state and there's not really anything to play in, that's a good track. I'd try to figure out how to get there. I don't know if you'd ever be near Paducah or anybody. Never even heard of it. So yeah, yeah. So uh, you know that, and then uh, probably my favorite track uh, near me that I played was Victoria National, where they play the Web event. Uh, I Monday in that Web event as an amateur, and that track's just unbelievable. Every time I play it, it's in great shape. Um, yeah, um, and also this uh, this old track up in St. Louis that uh, it's been around forever, Bogey Hills. It was one. Of my Fun, it, like one of the funnest tracks I've ever played. It's like a country club style. I love old school country club. That's what I grew up on. So country club style, you know, crazy greens, um, make a lot of birdies. It's just a fun track, you know. But there's not a whole lot of great outstanding golf courses like in the Midwest that I can think of. They're all kind of the same. Yeah, kind of same road. kind of grass, same kind of – yeah, yeah I, I dig that. Yeah. Now, the hat is kind of like your staple, right? So – Thus far in your career, how important has personal branding been and aligning your brand with your sponsors? And is that something that you're thinking about, or you just kind of go with the flow and do what you do? Uh, I just kind of go with the flow and do what I do. It, it's it's uh, you know I, I I like to enjoy this. Uh, I'm trying to have really have a lot of fun with this ride and not not think too much about it. And uh, I actually haven't really sat down and thought about everything that I've done this year. You know, I'm just trying to keep keep my head down. I got seven weeks left, and then maybe I can look up and, and, you know, you know, look back on it and enjoy it a little bit more. Uh, but it's more lately after what's happened and, and with the three wins and, uh, in the world, the huge world ranking jump really fast, you know, I got on some, a little bit of some people's radars. And so now it's kind of, you know, you can't make money off the course at this level, but I'm getting to a point where I might be able to. So it's a little bit more, a little bit more, you know, I'm, I'm always, I'm always open for sponsors. If anyone's listening, I'm always open for sponsors. Uh, I'm looking for some, so you know. There's, you know, you can you can uh, you get in touch with me on Twitter or Instagram if, uh, if you guys feel like you're interested in getting involved with Patrick Newcomb. Thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been fun. Like I just I didn't expect it to go by so fast because I have a few more questions, but we don't have time. But just it's so cool to talk to somebody that's just out there grinding, doing what they have to do to get by, playing those Monday qualifiers. You know, it's kind of funny, though. Like, you think about it, like, you're playing Monday qualifiers, trying to qualify for events, but then you're having dinner with Gary Player. Like, that's, like, the total width of that spectrum, right? And it's just cool to see and to see your name. And actually, what I found you, because I post – every Monday I post graphics that I create for the club that I work at, Tiburon Golf Club, on Facebook and Twitter, congratulating the event winners. Gary does a very similar thing where he congratulates winners on Twitter. And I saw you, and I was like, literally, what, what I, the, the trophy was what first, like, piqued my eye. And then it was at a Troon property, and then started learning more about you. And I was like, Scott, we got to get this guy on the show. And here you are. So thank you so much for coming on the show, man. It's been awesome. But before I let you go, we have this segment called The Back Nine. Just nine fun, random questions. You ready? I'm ready. Are you there? Did you freeze? I'm ready. I blame ready? South American Wi-Fi for this. Yeah, this this is the best Wi-Fi. The team at Strixon could be happy because they're, it's frozen with the Strixon logo right there. That's right, I've, I've been. Uh, All right, here we go. I was I was good product placement for Strixon though, because you were like, <laughs> Oh really? <laughs> All right, what golf ball are you currently playing? And I bet you say it's a Strixon. Strixon XV actually Z Star XV. All right, let's have a drink. B, 